When it comes to the Final Fantasy franchise, I'm somewhat of a fan. I loved Final Fantasy 7. I mean, who didn't? Final Fantasy 8 was by far my favorite, and Final Fantasy 9 had one of the best characters from any series. I've only had a BB for a day and a half, but if anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. And Final Fantasy 10? Well, I didn't actually get to play that one, as my brother kept hogging the PlayStation. <laughs> I even had a Japanese copy of Urgeis. Urgeis. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how this is pronounced. But essentially, I was playing a game which was all in Japanese, just so I could play as Cloud and Sephiroth. Later on in life, I'd go on to play Final Fantasy XV, which would go down in history as a game. And it wasn't until last year that I played everyone's favorite MMO, Final Fantasy XIV, the game that every Final Fantasy fan had dreamed of. And oh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. But the issue was, it wasn't for me. It didn't feel like a Final Fantasy title to me. Maybe I was just too old to enjoy cat girls and whatever the fuck this is. That's a weird looking fucking cat. But in the last year, I've been somewhat of an explorer of old MMOs. I played Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Galaxies, City of Heroes, Dark Age or Camelot. Essentially, MMOs only enjoyed by people whose year of birth starts with a one. And then it happened. The Steam store recommended something that I might actually enjoy. And that was of course, Final Fantasy XI. Now, I had heard of it when I was much younger, but it was a Japanese release that required the internet. And 2002 was a different time, okay? And let's be honest, Final Fantasy XI, it's the ginger stepchild of MMOs. Everyone always wants to talk about the golden child, Final Fantasy XIV. But I didn't get 26k subs by playing popular games, oh no. I done it by playing games that no one plays anymore and then doing in-depth reviews which no one watches. Please like and subscribe. So join me on my journey as I take a look at the state of Final Fantasy XI and if it's worth playing in 2024. So I thought because Final Fantasy XI was available on Steam, I could just give them my money and play the game. I have never been so wrong in all my life. Quite literally, the hardest part about playing Final Fantasy XI is getting it installed. And that's because you have to set up a Play Online account, which is by far the hardest boss in the game. I won't lie, it took me nearly two hours to get registered and set up. And that's because I tried to figure it out for myself for the first one hour and 30 minutes. Luckily, this is a popular problem, so there's enough YouTube tutorial videos to help me out and get me set up. Eventually, my account was created, and I got to hear one of my all-time favorite melodies. And it was at this point, I just knew it would be worth it. I then had to wait another two hours for the game to update, which makes no sense as I have really fast internet. What the hell is even that? But who am I to question a game launcher, which is literally older than some of my viewers? Once everything was updated, I had the usual reminder that I am indeed playing an old MMO because the resolution gets confused by modern dimensions. Oh, and there was also a bug that made the game keep crashing due to me being on Windows 11, so I had to sort that out. Anyway, 4 hours, 30 minutes later, I had configured and set up Final Fantasy XI, and I was ready to play. When it comes to the character creator, it was quite basic, but I'm guessing it's because the limitations of the PlayStation 2, and not the game designers. Either way, it still had more depth than New World. In typical fashion, there was a human race, a elven race, there was the small dwarfs that seemed to be cropping up in every Final Fantasy title, and then it went to more degenerate races, such as the fairy cat girl. I did become a little bit of a slag. I became a total slag. And of course, the big bulk cat man thing. Who doesn't want a body of a Greek weightlifter? <laughs> Each of them have their own special attributes, and I'm guessing 
they have like specific roles that they do better than the rest. As per usual though, I like to create my character based on a feeling. A feeling of fear instilled into my enemies. And you know, I like to make grown women faint at my handsome looks. So, after a lengthy amount of time on the character creator screen, I give you my tune, Plop. I did tell you VV was my favourite character, didn't I? Did I not? I can't remember. And with that, we were ready to go. One of the best things about this game is that it was created for console all those years ago, which meant I had controller support. However, one of the worst things about this game is that it was created for console, which meant it hadn't a clue what it was fucking doing when it came to the UI. I can't be sure, but I might have potentially skipped some vital info at the start, mainly because I was eager to get going and I was having flashbacks to my younger days, and not because the UI was wank. I was actually quite surprised to see other people running around, and the graphics weren't bad, they actually looked good, all things considering. They had that nostalgic PlayStation charm to them, which I really enjoyed. After wandering around aimlessly, I did eventually find a quest giver who said they wouldn't help me till I was level 5. Nice. So I made my way outside into a big open world, skipping all quests and going straight to the good stuff. Fighting. I didn't quite know what to expect of the combat because I'd done zero research before playing, but I was actually pleasantly surprised that somehow, even though it wasn't exactly the same combat as 7, 8 and 9, it did feel very familiar with a modern MMO spin on it. I'm actually ashamed to admit that it took me a while to figure out that I could actually equip my weapon and then hit the bad guys and I assure you this isn't my first time playing a video game ever it's just I don't know man maybe I didn't get enough sleep or something but anyway going back to the combat it's tab targeting with a auto attack if you're close enough and with the right weapon and you could do skills on top of that and as far as I can tell you couldn't really dodge anything you just kind of stood there and took it unless you had high evasion, in which case the enemy would miss. Oh, and a side note, if you do try to run away, they will just keep chasing you down and kill you. i figured this out several times. I managed to whack enough monsters with my big ruddy stick to get to level 5. And boy, did that feel good. So, I went back to hand in my quest, and can you believe it? She gave me another job to do. And whilst we're on the topic of jobs, when you do create your character, you have 6 to choose from. Plob here is a black mage, and what that means is that he's only allowed to use black mage weapons, black mage armor, black mage magic essentially he has a job and he has to stick to it which archaic as it sounds was quite refreshing i feel like too many modern mmos let you play your own way and you know what i'm sick of playing my own way i want restrictions i want rules i want contracts i want to be told what i can and can't do tell me i'm a bad boy spit on me pull my hair um 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 anyway but to be fair, you can change jobs at any point, you just have to go away and level it up. So it's not like it's a permanent job that you can never change. There are also advanced jobs that you can learn later on in the game if you get good enough. I digress. I continued to follow the tutorial quest which basically taught me about housing and crafting. And it also taught me the most OP skill that you could possibly learn about this game. And that is of course, Google. I shit you not when I say that this game is quite complex and I'm sure there's a tutorial in game you can read but that would mean finding the correct NPC to give you this information and who has time for that. In all honesty I do wonder if the instruction book that came with the game back in 2002 had all the answers but you know we live in the digital age now so that's no use to me. But anyway, yes, I had to use Google to get through the tutorial on an MMO. And as I say that out loud, I am slightly embarrassed, 
but it's the truth. This game is very complex and honestly, you try following the text while someone nearby decides to hand in a load of coupons and just mess up the whole flow. It's infuriating. I mean, it literally took me a couple of days to figure out that your jewellery, it has like a special thing on there. That's not a passive. You actually have to go in and click use to actually get the timer going on it. It's stuff like that's just not explained. It's so dumb. Oh, it's so dumb. It's brilliant. No! It's just dumb. So after a while, I got used to the combat. I understood briefly what I had to do. And I had a mission where I had to go and find some guy and do some thing. And on my way, I noticed that I was following this other player and I did the unspeakable. I asked them if they wanted to group up. Ooh. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. And to my surprise, you're my friend now. We're having soft tacos later. They said yes. Whilst in my newly formed fellowship, I would go on to learn several things. If you are higher level than the enemies, they won't attack you. Which meant I had probably grinded too much at this point because nothing was attacking me. What I thought was people botting is actually people being in a trust, which is a skill that you can learn, which allows you to summon companions who will help you in your adventures. And here I was being social. To be fair though, on older MMOs like this, I can see the skill being invaluable on those days where they don't have a lot of people on the server. But most importantly, I learnt that the real reward at the end of this quest was the friends we made on the way. So a big shout out to Leija for helping me get through dungeon, teaching me a few new things, and most importantly, telling me not to go down into that secret passage where I most certainly will die. And that's why I like being social in MMOs, because I don't want to have to go away and Google everything. I like the fact that I can talk to someone there and then and they can give me the advice. Whether I choose to, you know, listen to it and accept it is a whole different matter. So to anyone watching this, don't go downstairs into the creepy cave, because you will die. So as I said earlier, there is indeed a complex crafting system. You can craft anything from food, which can be eaten to give you a buff. You can craft armor, you can craft weapons. There's even costumes you can make. Something that annoyed me though, was that your bag is limited to 30 items, which don't auto stack. So that was a valuable lesson. You can upgrade this to 60. I just couldn't find the quest or I just didn't have access to it. I'm not too sure. But luckily that's where the housing system comes into play because you can use it as a bank. And obviously you can decorate it and probably role play in there and do all that, you know, degenerate stuff. There's also seasonal in-game events and mini games, and of course, raising and racing chocobos. You might have also noticed that in the background footage, I have a giant like question mark above my head. And that's because I'm new. I can turn it off, but it's a way to alert other players as to how green I actually am. I had to Google that by the way, I, I couldn't actually figure out how to turn it off. You can also flag as a mentor which will give you a different status. But the idea is you can flag for different roles or different stuff you're trying to do, which adds to the social element. And I have to say, for an MMO which launched over 20 years ago, it really does stand the test of time. So what does the future hold for Final Fantasy XI? Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure. I mean, up until a couple of weeks ago, I completely forgot that this game even existed. The Steam charts are as useless as ever. There are multiple servers for the West, and who knows how many there are for the Eastern player population. And to top it off, there's even private servers. I, I don't know why, but yes, people have gone out and made their own private Final Fantasy XI servers. The game seems as popular, if not more popular, than some of the old MMOs I've played over the last year. And one of the biggest takeaways is that there's actually a monthly subscription fee to play this title, which players are happily paying. Actually, maybe that's why they've got private servers. Come to think about it, that could be the reason. At one point, they were even planning a Final Fantasy XI mobile phone game. Um, sorry, Americans. Cell phone game. There we go. Very cultural of me. 
the game was announced in March 2015 and then it was actually cancelled in 2020 which was officially confirmed in 2021 which just goes to show that up until four years ago it could have potentially been a viable reboot okay by mobile phone but still a reboot there's no future plans for any DLC or major content when it comes to Final Fantasy XI. The last big expansion was in 2015. To add to that perspective as well, they don't even have a cash shop. I think the devs are just happy for it to plod along, collect their sub fee and just keep it alive for now. I don't think that the game has been forgotten about, I just don't think it's as profitable as another title they're looking after, a little old Final Fantasy XIV. But I'm glad to see that you can still play this game and it's alive today. So future wise, I wouldn't be surprised if it's around for another 20 years. One can only hope. If I had actually got to play this title back in 2002 when it originally launched, I think I would be a furry degenerate by now. Don't look at me like that. What I mean by that is that it takes all the stuff I love from the Final Fantasy franchise and puts it into an MMO. It's just a shame that this happened 20 years ago and now it is somewhat dated but is that a good enough reason not to play of course not i mean people still play old school runescape and that looks dated as fuck i'm gonna say something quite controversial and that's i actually had a better first player experience with final fantasy 11 than i did with final fantasy 14. <laughs> shocking i know so let's talk about the good bits and the bad bits Overall though, I felt like it had a good story. The combat seemed enjoyable and I can only imagine it gets better the more you advance. There is a lot to level up and a lot to learn. So yeah, hours of content. And most importantly, it's got that Final Fantasy nostalgia to it, which is hard to achieve. Just look at Final Fantasy 15. So what are the bad bits then? Well, obviously the UI could do some tweaking. I'm not sure if there's an add-on out there which would make it better. Paying a monthly sub and not getting any new DLCs or anything like that is kind of um, a bit of taste to be honest, but I kind of understand why it's there. Still, the price is a negative. And something to bear in mind as well is that the sub price for Final Fantasy XI is pretty much the same as Final Fantasy XIV, which honestly, I'm not sure how comfortable I am with that. I know they're different games, but a little bit of like discount maybe given the age of it and the most important one is that it's going to take some patience to actually play this game getting it set up isn't the easiest the fact that it is quite dated so there's bound to be a few bugs you have to deal with and you have to remember i'm only about 20 hours in and i haven't seen the full game yet who knows how janky it gets the further on you go but overall though i do think it's worth playing if you are a fan of the final fantasy series and the good news is the first month is free, so maybe you could speedrun it in that time. I doubt it, but hey. And on that bombshell, I'm going to end the video there. As always though, if you want to see more of my content or more content like this, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to suggest some MMOs I should probably check out, leave a comment below. I do take them on board and add them to my list of games I need to go play. But anyway, I'll leave a couple of videos on the screen for you now. You never know, you might enjoy them. And a big thank you to my Patreon and YouTube members. You guys are the best. Bye-bye for now.